smell of art, the lovely smell of art. Only you have preserved it in the world, Lasself. I heard you were in town. Yes. Nobody has hugged me, kissed me. Nobody said, Polly, you wonderful creature, I am happy to see you again. But I'm back in town anyway. Passe, balance all around and stretch. Darling, I love you. What do you want? From you I have no secrets. I am completely broke. The whole world hates me. Billy Rose has fired me and he was right. I was a dreadful stage manager. Those tall blondes, they drive you crazy. I did everything wrong, including I lost two trunks of costumes between Kenosha and Milwaukee. So, I have come back to put on a bed. Something marvelous and brilliant. I haven't got a bean, Polly, and if I had, I wouldn't give it to you. My beautiful darling, I don't need your money. I have courage, genius, a great idea, and Mrs. Keller. Ha, <laughs> that hag. She will finance. She's nothing but a bag of wind. Petit Batman, front and back. She's mad about ballet. <laughs> Always pouncing on artists with a checkbook in one hand. You can't buy love with money, you know, except possibly yours. You are being terribly cruel, Lassif. You hurt me terribly. What have you got against me? Tell me frankly. Some people have a genius for failure. You're one of them. Only where money is concerned, because I hate commercial things. When I'm doing something commercial, I'm working secretly to make it flop. But with art, nobody can touch me. Art or selling bananas, you're always a flop. Why don't you face it? What a man must feel before he succeeds. Nonsense. I was a sensation at 18. But how many lasselfs are there? You came into the world like a Venus with wings. You are the only brilliant genius of dancing England has ever produced. People still speak about you as something that took their breath away. Yes, I was a good dancer. Hmm. It's enough of that nonsense, enough limbering up. Heidi, go get Jibby. What are you limping about? Come here. I practiced five hours yesterday and must have pulled something. Let me see that ankle. Ah, oh, delicate, much too delicate. They're a little small. But I read where Papa's ankles were even smaller. And please, Madame Leslow, call me Kuznetsova. You're perfectly right, my dear. Forgive me, Kuznetsova. A gorgeous creature. Can she dance? Oh, they're all alike, full of delusions and bruises. I hate weak ankles. What are you doing here? Darling lover, Mamachka, save me. I need you. What is Mrs. Callahan going to finance? These lame ducks. Sanin. Andre Sanin. What has happened has happened. Fate we can't undo. But think, three nights in that broken down theater, that fish trap, and they were already calling him Nishinsky. If we put him on again, it's a gold mine. Since Kanosha, I couldn't sleep. La Silva. We are in on the ground floor of art. Nobody knows, except you and me and that fool Mrs. Callahan, that Andre Sanin is the greatest dancer alive in the world today. He's sick. Nerves. I never believed in his sickness last year. I don't believe in it now. Nothing but imagination. Moon Lake Act Two. Sweetheart, you must go with me to Andre Sanin. Forget Andre Sanin. He's mental. How long can a man suffer over a dead wife? A week, two weeks, but seven months, that's complete. 
completely ridiculous. Children, please. This is a very dingy hall. There are no lights, there is no orchestra. Only a cranky old woman watching you. But when you dance, you must dance always as if it were an opening night with a house sold out and all the beautiful people in the world out front with lorgnettes. Go on now, perform. Sanin's teacher. You can't let him throw away his adorable genius while the world is waiting for him on its knees. When the music plays, I just can't see him flying. He's always like a bird, a magic bird when he dances. He doesn't dance. He lies in a bed, staring. He hasn't moved for months. Jimmy's been taking care of him. He doesn't know if it's day or night. The poor boy's as mad as a loon. Oh, madam, that's not fair. He's moody. But he's just as charming as ever. This poor child brings him soup, like Little Red Riding Hood. He never even looks at her. How sweet of you. As long as one woman still adores a man, He's not mad, not sick. He's sane as the President of the United States. From the look of primitive rapture on the face of Miss Heidi, I should imagine that you're speaking of Andre Sinin. Your body, O nymph, is an exclamation point after the word beauty. May I present Mr. Spex McFarlane, the celebrated policeman. How do you do, sir? My name is Polikoff, Max Polikoff. A wilted carnation in the Broadway buttonhole. And this is Madame La Sylph, the remains of a pirouette. How do you do? And this is the sad little factory where dancing toys are made. What are you knitting so desperately, Madame La Sylph? The shroud for yesterday? I've asked you not to hang around here. I always hang around the birthplaces of beauty, even when they smell like a herring barrel. But I am keeping Policeman McFarlane from his fascinating duties. I'm in no rush. What is this? It is not enough you write the most abominable poetry in the whole world. You have to annoy people with policemen. The indignation of fools is my favorite crown. What is it you want, officer? Well, I'd like to ask a few questions. As soon as you're at leisure. Questions about what, officer? I suggest we go to your office. My dear man. This is a studio for artists. Allow me to tell you that you are interfering with art. The only art policeman McFarlane likes to interfere with is the art of murder. Ain't that right, Specs? I'd like to ask a few questions about a dancer you know called Andrew Sanin. What kind of bad luck is this? What is the matter with Andrew Sanin now? Policeman McFarlane has the capricious notion that Madame Sanin did not die a natural death. <laughs> I never heard anything so absurd in my life. But that she was murdered in cold blood by her devoted husband, Andre Sanin. Oh, boy. But this is absolutely fantastic. I was there in the wings and I saw the entire debacle. The third night of our run sold out and she dropped dead two feet away from me. Nobody even gave her a push. Officer. Are you acquainted with the specter of the rose? No, sir. It's a ballet. The ballerina falls asleep in a chair with the rose in her hand. She has been to the ball. She's tired. She's in love with love. And she dreams that the rose is her lover. The rose comes to life and makes love to her beautifully, exquisitely. You follow me. Go on. That's how Mrs. Sanin died, while she was dreaming. A look of absolute bliss on her face. Nothing like that has ever happened in the history of the ballet. 
Mr. Polyakov is right. The ballet is an impish bore. Nina died of a heart attack, officer. The doctors all agreed. There's nothing mysterious about it. She'd been carrying on about her heart for years. I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't agree with you. We've been getting a lot of reports about this case. It seems this fellow Sanin has been telling a lot of people he killed his wife. Have you ever heard him say that? Did any of you ever hear Sanin make such a statement? No. Of course, we've all heard it. That's part of his sickness. That's what makes him mental. He's just full of idiotic ideas, the poor boy. It's such a pity. He says he killed his wife, eh? It is like a baby talk. It is stupid to even repeat such a thing. Every great artist goes through a period like this when he don't make sense. What do you expect? The lunacy of great artists usually produces masterpieces not murders. At least that is my personal experience. You mustn't listen to this hobo. This fellow Sane may be a great artist to you folks, but the Homicide Bureau has another name for men who talk about murdering people. We don't like to wait till they live up to their statements. Gibby, that's enough. My dear officer, of course you must talk to Andre. It's your duty. Polly, Jibby, come along. We're going with this intelligent officer. You don't mind, do you? Uh, we'll be very quiet and promise not to interfere at all. Oh, I don't know. Uh, you thank you, officer. This is the most horrible scandal. A policeman arresting Andre Sanin. Quiet. Children, there's some ginger beer in my office. Five bottles have a little party, but leave one for me. See you later, Heidi. You horrible fool. You told him. You told that policeman. Because you want to hurt Andre, and account of me, because you know I love him. You told him. Your devotion to Andre is unreal. He is not a man. Andre is a shadow on the wall that flickers when the music plays. I love him. I adore him. I worship him. Do you hear? I worship him. And I don't want you hanging around me. But you were afraid to go with him to his studio, weren't you? You mustn't be afraid of a man you adore. I'll take you over and protect you from your prancing Romeo. Oh, you're a monster. I loathe you. I just loathe you. I didn't think you could cry. I often cry at night. Then I think of you, and the night becomes full of young words, all dancing for you. And I pretend I'm not a monster, but a poet. And on this delusion, I live till morning. Let's get this straight. I didn't kill her. I suppose I'm screwier than a bed bug because I've been convinced I kill her, so help me. I guess that's because I hated her so. That widget face did something to me. He had a kind of a, a rhythm, a chord, a, a dance of death chord. Bang! It always set me off. How true that is. We artists suffer so. You remember Varevsky, don't you, Polly? A horrible uh, man. He was always trying to shoot himself. Why? Because he thought he was his own father-in-law. My hallucinations <laughs> take the form of music, mostly. First, I hear the violins and harps way up high. That's the envelope. Inside it is the idea of revenge. Dancer with a knife, you know? The fellow with the knife, is that one of the characters you play on the stage? You're pretty smart. You put your finger almost on it. That's where the trouble begins with that stage character. It's a dance called the Spectre of the Rose. I've danced it a hundred times normally. But that night, the dance got mixed up. Bang! And it's all different, and it's been that way ever since. You're wide awake, and you keep hearing the music. Here or in the street, the music that was playing when she died. You dreamed you're killing her. With a knife? Officer, oh, what husband did you ever hear of who has not wanted to kill his wife? With a knife, with an axe, that sort of feeling is definitely a part of marriage. Daydreams, all artists have them. I we... haven't heard those screwy violins or harps for some time or seen things that oughtn't be there. I'm no bargain mentally, I guess. Not much education. My real name is Paul Dixon. I came here from Indiana. Ran away from my father. He used to wail a tire to me with a strap soaked in vinegar. 
You wanted me to be a harp player. Well, there you have Andre Sanin. No prize package, but a little bit too clever to go nuts. I've been lying here, listening and hollering, and going on a giant swing, and it hasn't been much fun. I tried to talk myself out of it a thousand times, but talking doesn't do it. Oh, wait, I'll show you. Jimmy, play it. No, Mr. Sanin. I don't think I ought to. Not the specter of the rose, boy. Play it! Graduated. It's nothing but a waltz. Hey, I take it back about being screwy, do you mind? I've been lurking in this room with that tune chasing me up and down the walls. It's just a waltz. Unhand me, officer. I didn't kill her. I know it now for keeps. I'm sorry I annoyed you with all that mumbling. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an historic moment. We are witnessing the comeback of a genius. Everything seems quite normal. The windows and the walls. Of course, it's normal. You have had your vacation, now you're home, back in your own head. All you have to do is to dance again as if nothing has happened. That's right. I would like to dance again. I'm going to get so drunk tonight that five people will have to put me to bed in your honor, Andre, my wonderful boy. We'll build the entire ballet season around you. Scenery by Kropotkin. He's wonderful, better than Picasso. And a full orchestra, 45 pieces. And you do your own choreography like you always wanted. Something new, brilliant. We'll drive the audience crazy. And the press, we must make a campaign. The whole city will be covered with your pictures. I will handle everything. Lassen, you are my associate. The best ballet girls. No brewery horses, but gorgeous creatures. Here, to you, Andre, my wonderful genius. May you dance forever. I wouldn't dance now, boy. I want to. I know, but you haven't moved for months. You must warm up first. <laughs> I'm always warmed up. I've been dancing all the time. I was lying there in bed. I danced in my head. Congratulations. Go on, take your arm off her. Is this a lesson in etiquette? Take your arm off. Come on, Gans, I want to talk to you. I dislike being intimidated by a, a jitterbug with bare feet. Never mind getting tough. This is my party. Thanks for cooperating, Mr. Sanin. I'll drop in again sometimes if you don't mind. Sure, any time you like. That's fine. Glad I've met you. Bye, folks. Forgive me, O Nymph, for touching a dream. You're looking very well. Thank heaven they're gone, both of them. Ugh, a dreadful pair. Jimmy, I'd like you to stay. I need some music. I want to work with her. Sure. 
Well, thanks for your visit and all your favors. You can go home now and stop brooding about me. I want to borrow your little pupil. No, not here, boy. You can practice tomorrow at my studio. Sorry, Mommy, she's working with me right now. What's the matter with you, sweetheart? Andrew is under my management and he does what he wants always. Jibby, you will bring Heidi back to me no matter what time. Take care, boy. Goodbye, my darling boy. You have made us all very happy, gorgeously happy. A big kiss. Hello. Thanks for all that noodle soup and for being so beautiful. It's nice waking up and finding somebody beautiful around. You don't mind working now? No, I'd love to. We'll go right into it. Please dance the very best you know how. It's important to me. Oh, yes, of course. Madame Lassil says we must always give a performance. As if we were before an audience. You don't dance for audiences. They just happen to be there watching you. Or if they're lucky. I can't dance in these shoes. Lots of shoes here. Nina's. Nina's shoes. How good are you? I'm very good. You got a name? Kuznetsova. From Moscow or Brooklyn? <laughs> Jersey City. Go on, you'll find some of Nina's costumes in there, in that closet. You're the same size as Nina, only she was hard to lift. She had bad elevation. How's yours? I'm very light. Is this all right? Put it on. Here's something very nice for you, just as you like it. Medium. No, no, no. Sauce maison. Sauce maison. And get him a napkin, Charles. Yes, sir. Now, you be a good little baby, and you stay here till Mommy gets back. It's very fashionable here. They call it Club 19. I wonder why. They quit rubbering at those zombies. You want to know how you make me feel? As if there were a fire engine in my stomach going lickety-split. You know, with me, love isn't all spring mornings and gold hats. Are you using this? No. Thank you. The hats here are really remarkable. I made this one myself. I hope Mrs. Callahan won't think it's all wrong. Who cares about Mrs. Callahan? Look at those women trying to walk. You know what's the matter with them? They don't walk with their bodies. They're just pushing dresses around, showing off bargains. I could tell you walk among a million women. You walk with your legs, hips, torso, with every muscle in your beautiful body. Please, not so loud. Excuse me, are you Mr. Sanin? Speaking. Uh, Mr. Polakoff telephoned that he and Mrs. Callahan would be 15 minutes late and for you to have a drink. Oh, I don't want one. How about you, Mr. Silva? What? Oh, no. I never drink. Thank you. Have it your way. Maybe we should have taken them and held them till Polly comes. If they were paid for, I mean. It's a strange place to come and talk business. But I suppose Mrs. Callahan doesn't go anyplace else. You know what I did last night after you left? I walked to 180th Street and back without... Pardon me. I walked to 180th Street and back without stopping. That's what you do to me. I'd like to pick you up right now and hold you till you were tattooed on me. I feel as if I were flying upside down in the wind. Hug me with your eyes. I am. Harder. Holding you as hard as I can. Don't stop, I'm blissful. Me too. <sighs> Do you suppose anyone ever talked like that in a place like this? Do you know why I need you? Why? Because a man's got to belong to somebody. You can't just drift around with nobody to own you. How about it? I'd like you for my boss. Do you want this bargain? It's just heaven what you're saying. Done and done. It's funny. How can I be your boss when you're so wonderful, so much superior to me? You knit what you're worth, a hundred thousand, Maze. Oh, don't talk like that. I'll faint right here. I won't be able to eat or anything. Put your arms around me. Yes. Just as hard as you can. I am. Children, forgive me for keeping you waiting. Mrs. Callahan will be here in a minute. She stopped with a friend. Everything is settled. Salaries, bookings, contracts. An adorable hat. Adorable. Beautiful. 
You look stunning, both of you. Come. Mrs. Callahan will be right with us. I'm not here to holler or threaten Madame LaSalle. As an artist representative, I'm interested in more than my 10%. I'm interested in basic justice. My client, Mr. Kropotkin, has to eat. He's a great painter. They don't come any greater than Mr. Kropotkin. But he can't paint unless he's got more in his belly than promises. He's done four sets for your ballet. And that's already his third poster. Oh, it's a beautiful thing, Mr. Jones. I must admit that. Reminds me of Lautrec. I knew him in Paris, you know. Nasty little hunchback in a silk hat. Ah, but a marvelous artist. My client has been working day and night without sleep for three weeks and has yet to see a dime. I have to buy him a cup of coffee every afternoon to keep him going. That isn't fair, madam. We'd like to have a little something on account. Not the whole 3,000 Mr. Polikoff promised, but enough for a meal. One square meal, madam. But I'm sure Mr. Polikoff will see you and listen to any complaint you have to make. My client is not making any complaints. He hasn't got the strength. He's starving to death on his feet, madam. Polikoff is not producing a ballet. He's conducting a pogrom. Vladimir Vyacheslavovich Kropotkin, my favorite genius. How are you, my darling? I'm so happy to see you. You are looking wonderful. Younger than ever. How do you do it? Thank you. The sets are better than anything I ever dreamt. Pure beauty, dynamic, exotic. I'm absolutely enchanted with them. Oh! The new poster. It is only perfect. Kropotkin, I love you. A big kiss. It's nice there. I could look at it forever. Thank you. I can't tear myself away from it. Well, Mr. Polikoff, as soon as you're through panting over my client's genius, I'd like to talk a little business. There is nothing to discuss, Mr. Jones. I put a check in the mail this morning. Yeah? Yes. One hundred dollars in the United States mail on account as I promised you in our last conference. It is this minute in the post office being delivered. But you could have handed it to me. I'm downstairs, one flight. I am very sorry. I don't do business that way, running up and downstairs. Where did you send it? To Mr. Kropotkin Studio National. I can't believe a fellow would lie about the U.S. mail. Please, it's all right. It has been a, an honor and a pleasure to work with you. A thousand times more than I ever can tell you. Thank you. I like work for people who appreciate it. Oh, it's only the beginning. You're going to climb the height. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. At this moment, my client and I are going to climb the heights to his studio to wait for that check. <laughs> Goodbye, my dear friends. Goodbye. And you'll be hearing from me in case the U.S. mail breaks down. Goodbye. Do you know how much it hurts me to lie like that? It makes me sick all over. To 50 people a day, the same story, the check is in the mail. No wonder I'm a nose wreck. I thought you were getting the money today. Now you are going to start up. I refuse to listen to any more nugging. I have been with Mrs. Callahan since 8 o'clock this morning. Dancers? Yes, Mr. Polikoff. Who sent you? Madame Vigani. Ah, oh, they won't be any good, I'm sure. Madame Vigani is too modern to teach dancing. She teaches wig-wagging. Very interesting faces. Legs without bumps on them. Go in, get ready. I will audition you. I expected it. Excuse me, I wasn't listening. What did you expect? That Mrs. Callahan would refuse to put up. She did not refuse, my darling. She's holding out a little. Holding out for what? Darling lover. I will handle her. 
Mrs. Gallan, it's my department. You can forget about her. Holding out for Sanin. You are absolutely crazy on that subject. Believe me, you are doing that poor woman a terrible injustice. I know that bean pole. Always taking vitamins, and for what? You are the most unreasonable creature who ever was. She'll never get him. She does not want him. And she won't put up a dime. Ah, oh, they're all alike. I knew a woman in Vienna once who was a vampire. Drank human blood to keep herself alive. She was captured in a forest with a little boy of 13. She had him in a sack. Mrs. Callahan is not a vampire. She's a lover of art. And she wants nothing but to help create a beautiful ballet with her own money. Where is it? She's holding out, as I told you. But you don't listen, you only scream and holler. She's holding out for billing, nothing else. Billing is what, Dracula? Billing in the program. Max Polikov and Laura Callahan present. Mac, it would be amusing if it were not so horrible. How much are you in debt so far? Why do you have to pound on that? I don't want to think about that. I have to keep my mind open for art. I beg you, leave me alone. I'm on the verge of collapse. What have you got to show me? It's a ballet called Lights of the City, composed by Alexis Bloom. I'm supposed to be in the uniform of a streetcar conductor. The young ladies are the skyscrapers. It is half past five in the afternoon. I understand perfectly. Go ahead. Orchestra, please. I wish you hadn't started this whole production. I don't think Andre's well enough. I have a feeling it's dangerous. You are torturing me. Mrs. Callahan is no more dangerous than a fly. Women have always driven him crazy. It doesn't do any good to blind oneself. He had a dreadful time with Nina. He tried to burn her up a number of times by setting fire to her bed. Temperament. She loved her. I know, Andre Sanin. What are you trying to do to me? Frighten me? What do you want me to do? Hand Sanin over to the police? Tell them he'll take him. He's a crazy man. He wants to kill people. Is that the way to treat a great artist? Answer me. It doesn't do any harm to face facts. A real impresario always does. What facts? What facts give me a face them? Nina lived in constant terror of him. Madame Lassif, Sanin is not going to butcher Mrs. Keller. No. And she's going to start signing checks as soon as I convince her that she will be making an absolute idiot out of herself by putting her name on the program. That's the whole situation. Nothing else. No blood drinking, no love, no butcher business. Just billing. There's no use your hanging around. Heidi isn't here. I am grimly aware of Miss Heidi's absence, O keeper of the Bacchanals. I'm busy producing a ballet. I don't want crazy people hanging around me. Your grubby little wishes, Mr. Polakoff, are exquisitely unimportant to me. I have the honor to inform you, madam, that Miss Heidi was married an hour ago to Mr. Sinine in the city hall. The nuptials were performed by a furtive Puritan in an alpaca coat. Where are they? The newlyweds are spending their first hours of bliss on the upper deck of a ferry boat called the Susquehanna. There is no extra charge for looking at the sunset. They waved goodbye to me as their craft slid away. The bride blew me a kiss and my heart performed a minuet in an ash can. This is the most dreadful thing that could have happened. No, no, darling, no, it's mouse. Horrible news. Jimmy, some water. Oh. Jimmy! I am arranging the wedding dinner at Giovanni's restaurant for 9.30 sharp. You are cordially invited. Come and bring your less repulsive friends. Darling, lover, what is it? Are you sick? Jimmy, quick, yeah. some water for madam, she's fainting. That's the full routine, Mr. Polyakov. Yeah. Of course, it looks much better with drums and cymbals and the proper costumes. Don't talk to me. Can't you see I'm busy? My best friend is dying. I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do? Go away. Are you better? Go away. 
Are you connected with the casting? No. I am connected only with a clumsy institution called life, which has just gone out of business for me. Forgive me. I have certain duties to perform as a ghost. Everybody, the poet's loose again. Attention, please, attention for the toast. We greet you, a wedding cake. Welcome to our wistful stomachs, O cake of dreams. There are three things that are always white: a flag of truce, the lining of a coffin, and a wedding cake. Let's have our chicharnia. No, 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 no,
got the key. What's the matter? The music. I don't hear anything. You're lucky. Funny it should come back. Does your head hurt? Is something bad? Let me. You're turning it the wrong way. Andre? Where are you? Andre? Me. You hurt? Oh, no. Look, it isn't even scratched. You've got wonderful knees. Most girls' knees look like plumber's fittings. It was really a very exciting dinner. I was so proud. Wasn't Polly funny? And that little man who loved art? Oh, the whole thing was like a ballet. And it ended just right. When you picked me up. Blissful Sarah Band of the New Leewards. I like that fellow. He's quite a poet. Who? Lionel? Oh, let's not talk about him. Even he couldn't spoil it. You're supposed to look around. See the flowers I sent him to a gavotte. Where? Stage direction on the piano. Oh! Andre, they're the most beautiful roses I ever saw. They're guaranteed not to come to life. I've been in love with you ever since I was 15, when I first saw you at La Salle's practicing. The year before last, when you danced Petrushka, I used to stand in the wings and watch you all the time. Once you smiled at me, and I nearly passed out. The first time you spoke to me, my knees were so weak I could hardly stand up. And now, we're married. Excuse me, I'm very sorry. That music, it sounds like devil screeching. Music? It's for me, it's for me to dance to. Oh, Andre, what is it? What can I do? I'll tell you how it is, you ought to know. When that music plays, I've got to dance. Only it's not me who's dancing, a phantom. A, a fellow with my face dances. It's nothing. Nothing's going to happen. I won't let it. I know it's nothing. As long as I know it's him that's dancing and not me, as long as I don't get mixed up. There's nobody. Yes, there is. Oh, I love you. Do you hear? I love you. I hear. And answer me. Say you love me, too. Say it. I love you, Nina. Nina? Oh, Andre. Andre's not Nina's hiding. Nina? Nina? Listen to me. It's Heidi. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I had to start up again. At... I... I don't know. was all gone. Oh, I hated her so. Oh, yes, I know. It must be awful to hate like that. But she's dead now. You see, two people die. Sometimes they stay in here. Oh, sweet face, you're crying. You're crying for me. Don't cry. You cured me. I don't hear a thing anymore, see anything. Aren't you glad? I'm glad. I need you. I know it now more than ever. You'll never run away, will you? Me? I'll never harm you, Heidi. Harm me? How can you say such a thing? Because I'll never harm you. Oh, don't say that. You were afraid of me. Oh, I wasn't. You're my happiness. My whole life, there's nothing else, only you in the world. How oh, happy you make me, your lovely face, your sweet hands are part of me. Oh, my heart beats inside you. I love you, that's my promise. 
You know, I can just see everything, how it's going to be. The days and the nights. Our own table. Those crazy little restaurants. No more loneliness ever. It's going to be like a fairy tale. You and I dancing together. And the silk so proud. And Polly and everyone who loves you. And the stage full of flowers. Oh, Andre, you can teach me all the things you want. I'll be the best people you've ever seen. This morning is different. The morning is an old laundry man who has forgotten my address. Lionel, little uncle. You're only one man suffering. When the masses suffer, then the suffering counts. The suffering of the masses is a minor phenomenon beside one man's tears. Excuse me, I don't think so. My advice to you is you should lose yourself in the holy cause of the people. Like Tolstoy. Kindly omit, Mr. Tolstoy. When the eagle grows weary of flying, he dreams of retiring to the chicken coop. So much for Mr. Tolstoy. You think we're welcome guests here? Maybe they don't want us. Nobody asks you to come with me, which makes you doubly unwelcome. I'm here as your brother. And I am here as a rejected manuscript, dropped by a mysterious postman. Maybe they're sleeping yet. They won't be sleeping long. Why is it nobody's home? I am not up on the etiquette of honeymoons. I'm very thirsty. Now you're talking. Maybe they are moving out already. No, my brother. Tolstoy cannot be omitted so quick. This paradise looks a bit dismantled. The eagle, yes. The chicken coop, no. Excuse me. You will ask me what I'm talking about, and I will answer you. I'm talking about something. I cannot refer to the great Tolstoy's political philosophy as a chicken coop. The trouble with the world is that it has been seduced into listening to politicians instead of poets. Politics is the crude one that turns people into beetles. It removes their souls and substitutes newspaper headlines. They sit dreaming about everything in the world except themselves, about the government of China, Russia, and a correct thing for all other beetles to do or think. This Amateur confusion is called social consciousness. Oh, forgive the intrusion, Mrs. Sneed. For goodness sake, what are you doing here? He's checking up on the progress of our marriage in his own subtle way. You read my mind with nimble accuracy, Mr. Sneed. Well, I guess we're lucky you didn't bring that policeman with you. I don't believe in policemen. They belong in the world of... Pros. How is that sleuth? Still after me? He has an incurable passion for law and order, which keeps him snooping. He's no worse than you. Oh, we snoop with different noses. Mine is a wistful nose, last worn by Cyrano. Excuse us. We're only here because he suffered. You're both welcome. Thank you. Say, take a look at this. You pay ten dollars down. And the rest on installments, which the company never collects. They're too big. Isn't this beautiful? 
I got enough for curtains and a slip cover. The design is very rhythmic. I congratulate you. It's a bargain. 75 cents a yard, cash. Come on, Heidi. Let's see you sew. Oh, there are a million things to do before you sew. You've got to measure everything first so it fits. And the ruffles, I have to figure them out carefully. Uh, hey, uh, what do I do? You just sit down and don't mix me up. I'm an expert. Say, that's quite an object to lug around. Uh, what's in it? Very little. My soul. And an extra can of tobacco. For your further information, this contains every poem I've ever written, including a tender outcry I wrote last night as a wedding present for Mrs. Sinin. I intend to read it aloud. I had the honor of hearing it already twice. Very important for revolution. You see, the masses would never get married if the poets did not tell them how beautiful it was. Yes, your marriage, Mr. Sinin, is a little silver boat with a sunflower for a sail. I shall watch it glittering through the hurricanes of mediocrity, and I shall sing about it from the shore. To Heidi, you wear a wreath of skylarks around your heart. Oh, what treasures. Oh, my heavens. This one is wonderful. I dug them out of my trunk and hung them up for you. Laces and feathers and pearls. They're like the constellations in the sky. But this one must be the queen of Shamakhan. My past selves. Folded wings. I've kept them as carefully as I could. I wonder if they remember me. That was my dress in Ramonda. Abderam the villain was finally slain and I married the prince I truly loved and Glazunov's music played. Oh, Alessio, how beautiful you must have been. Try some of them on so I can tell Kropotkin what suits you. The blue lace, the black with the pearls. The blue. I danced in it for Manzotti in Rome, the great Luigi Manzotti. He was old then, and I was young. It's so rich. The great artists of the world designed everything I wore. We ballerinas didn't run around then in sweaters and skirts like jiggling little mice. We lived in a poem, as Byron wrote, in fountains and on flowers. You talk like Andre. Oh, Lysil, we're so happy. So happy. We're working hard on every step. The slightest movement is important. Oh, and he's taught me so much about dancing. Things you can't read or find out anywhere. Except from a genius. Oh, it's only a dream. That's all. Oh, Lestil. How nice of you. How beautiful of you to do this for me. It's not half bad. Never mind trying the others on. I didn't bring you here to show them to you. I brought you here because... Child, you must leave Andre. What? Leave him, divorce him, run away. I don't want to listen to oh, you. Oh, my poor little Heidi, you must listen to me. I can't even discuss Andre with you. Oh, yes, yes, I know. He's your great love, your dear love. My poor child, the truth about love is... Ach, I've had it dozens of times. Everlasting love. It comes and goes. It's a seasonal thing among artists. There's something much more important in your life than love. Your husband is a madman. I wish you hadn't said that. Andre killed Nina. He'll kill you if I let him. You're cruel and evil. I don't want to listen to you. You will listen. He attacked her viciously in the dressing room a half an hour before she died on the stage. Her screams brought me in. 
I saved her life for one last performance. He had a knife in his hand and she was fighting him off with a chair when I came in. I took the knife away from him and Nina fainted. I brought her to. I made up the bruises with grease paint. She was bleeding. I sewed her into her costume. She went out and danced. She died from the blow she had taken. Her heart was always weak, but she was killed by him. He meant to murder her and he did it. Do you think I'd lie to you? You've got to go away and leave him. I thought he'd changed, but he hasn't. His head's hurting him again. That's the way the trouble started with Nina. I've watched him at rehearsal, that same queer, anxious look in his eyes. You've got to go away and save yourself and him. Hello, baby. Hello, Lassell. Surprise. The headache's gone. I didn't want to tell her how really bad it was. I was afraid it would spoil the style show. I was just lying there thinking I'd have to call rehearsal off and bang it, left it. Come on, Cousin Telfa, we'll have some lunch and put in a hard afternoon's work. Want to join us, Mama? No, thank you. I shan't need any lunch. Well, what's up? Teacher been scolding you, Heidi? Oh, no. Madame La Silva's wonderful. She showed me these beautiful costumes made by the great artists of the world and recited from Byron and told me about the dances she loved, Raimonda and the Queen of Shamakhan. But most of all, she remembered how wonderful it was to be in love and be loved like you and me. Come on, let's go. Goodbye, Mommy. Goodbye. But this sign means what it says. Have you something for tomorrow night? Uh, we have two tickets left. Well, pass the money to the gentleman. Get away from that window and stop selling tickets. These gentlemen are much more important. It's eight o'clock. In half an hour, the curtain arises. No, I don't. Gentlemen, you cannot do this to me on the opening night. Tomorrow, we will discuss everything. No pleasure for me, I assure you, and I'm very sorry to do it, but that orchestra is not going into that pit tonight. Gentlemen, don't even make such a statement, even as an argument, I beg you. We ain't making any arguments. You're going to have no musicians in this theater tonight. Please. No music for your ballet tonight. That's the decision of Local 243, and those decisions, as you know, are final. My decision is also final. I shoot myself if this happens, Mr. Jalonik. You're gonna have to shoot yourself. All you gotta do is pay up the musicians for what you owe them. Two weeks rehearsal time. I shoot myself. We've given you every leeway, Mr. Polakoff. Is that right, Mr. Lamont? I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay every cent. You haven't shown that disposition whatsoever, Mr. Polakoff. You've took in $7,000 at the box office. You could have paid out of that? I took in. I took in nothing. This man took in Mrs. Callahan's representative. There he sits with a written agreement between me and Mrs. Callahan that I have not to touch any of the money. And he's got a gun in his pocket. Go, Luke, ask him. Well, that's your problem, and it ain't under my jurisdiction. Is that right, Mr. Lamont? What are you, stones? Creatures without human feelings? Take my arms off me, my legs, but my musicians never. In the name of the holy cause of art, I appeal to you, let me open tonight. Either I open tonight or you have a corpse on your hands, called Max Polikov, corpse with a broken heart. What about Mrs. Callahan? Yeah, there's an idea, Mr. Polikov. She's your backer, ain't she? Well, get her on the phone and let her hear the situation. I can't. I cannot call up Mrs. Callahan. Why not? Because I have double-crossed her. You forced me to tell you. I have completely double-crossed that woman behind your back. What more can I say? That's an interesting admission, Mr. Lamont, under the present circumstances. What do you mean, you double-crossed her? I demand an explanation. Look at the Marquis de Lobby, the whole theater. Sanin and Polikov. Polikov and Sanin. Do you see Mrs. Laura Callahan's name any place? 
This is my explanation. You told me she'd agreed to no billing. I lied to you. You told me she didn't want any billing on account of her young son. Lies, lies. She lied to you, huh? No, I lied to her, to everybody, from morning till night, lies, lies. You told me... Oh, I have already confessed. Why keep on tormenting me? Well, Mr. Lamott, I think we covered the situation in full, don't you? The verdict is no orchestra. We'll go back and notify the men. No, wait. There's no sense in prolonging the agony. No, wait. For I, I ask for 25 minutes. We'll be outside. No, no, here. Sit where you are for 25 minutes. Something must happen. Something good. Something sweet. What do you expect? A miracle? Why not? Art itself is a miracle. What else is genius but a constant miracle? We who bring beauty to the world manage to keep alive only by miracles. Oh, there! You, Quateron. A lawyer. We've got to have a lawyer. Is there a lawyer in the house? What are you doing here? Protecting my client, Mr. Kropotkin. A man works hard, paints himself bow-legged, and it's all from Dixie. There's a cop backstage who wants to arrest Celine. Is that so? Has anything happened? Hohenheimer, Blitzenheimer, Zitzenheimer. What's the name of that mouthpiece that sprung those Brooklyn boys? You know this policeman's name? McFarland of the Homicide Squad. A lawyer with a gray suit and glasses. I'll go and speak to Officer McFarlane. Things of this sort always happen on an opening night. I remember once in St. Petersburg, somebody tried to blow up the Tsar during the overture, but the curtain rose on time. Stay here, Polly, and hold the thought. Polikov presents what? Wait a minute! Now, if you people will just behave in a lonely fashion, nothing's going to happen. But if you keep on trying to interfere with me, I'll run you all in. What's going on? What happened? You are distinguishing yourself as an idiot, Mr. McFarlane. What's the matter with you? I know you don't like this guy any more than I do. If you arrested all the people I didn't like, Mr. McFarlane, the world would become a pensive vacuum. Look here, Gans. I'm not here to arrest anybody. I'm here because I got a hunch something might happen. That guy went crazy the last time he danced. That loonies like him have a way of repeating themselves. You, this yes, is I do Girls, go to your dressing rooms immediately. And you, officer, I must ask you to leave the backstage. This is an opening night. If you wish to see the ballet without paying admission, you might ask for a pass in a decent manner. You know I am here. You know what Sinine is as well as I do. Andre Sinine is a confused little poem that adds a brief moment of beauty to the ugliness of time. <coughs> oh, those stupid <coughs> girls fighting downstairs. It wasn't downstairs, it was here. Open this door. Open up, I'll push it in. What's going on in here? Somebody screamed here, where is she? Somebody screamed here. Where's your wife? My wife? Please get out, I got it. Yes, we were quarreling. I screamed. I couldn't help it. Please leave us alone. Oh, my sister. What's going on here? Come on, you remember what happened. What'd you do? Darling, everything's all right. Pull yourself together. There, there. The course of true love never runs smoothly, Mr. McFarlane. Your grief sharpens its claws on my heart. Listen, I know this isn't very pretty, but I'm all right now. After the show, you can hit me in the head with a board if you want to. And now you've got to leave me alone. I'm dancing. You're perfectly right, boy. Come along, Lionel. Chin up. Kuznetsova. over. You had a knife. You kept it a secret from me. It was a secret from myself. Stop trembling. I love you. Do you hear? Please, darling, don't hide your eyes from me. Look at me. I love you. I love you, too. I must hurry. Oh, I did that. I hurt you. Don't make me cry in my makeup. 
I'm no good. I'm just some muscles that can dance, but the rest of me is rubbish. Broken glass and rubbish. Darling, my adorable genius, they are going to play, all of them, the whole orchestra. Yes. Come in, come, come in. Come, come, come. For you they play, I mean, for you. Despite everything, despite local to 43, despite yes. I give them no money, for you they play because you are an artist, because you are marvelous and magnificent. Let me explain the situation, Mr. Sanin. The members here present voted unanimously that musicians are artists and idealists and owe it to your genius to remain at their posts. Gentlemen, I love you. Uh, what time do you want the overture, Mr. Polygov? We are ready. We are waiting. Okay, we'll go right to the pit. Yes, everybody, to the pit. Come on, boys. Everybody back and play good. living flower, not dead flower. The story is a girl dream of a rose who comes to life. So what do we have, this piece of dirty paper? Shh.
It's fantastic. It's impossible. Eight minutes to nine. A full house, 50 standees. He cannot do this to me. Heidi, why isn't she telephoning? Where is she? I don't know. What kind of manners is this? What kind of unbearable, miserable manners not to telephone? To do this tonight to me, tonight, when I'm celebrating with Mrs. Callahan. At last, a banquet for me, Polikov. No dice. His apartment doesn't answer. I call the police. No record of any accidents. What accident? You think she was run over? I call the hospitals. No reports in the receiving rooms. Use your brains. One can get run over, but two. How can two get run over? Don't tell me what to do. I've handled hundreds of disasters. Put Fedorov in his place. Fedorov! Where's that worthless fellow Fedorov? I try to track down that poet. He ain't anywhere either. Fedorov dances for Sanin tonight. What are you standing here? Make the change I will announce to the audience. They haven't come to see Fedorov. What are you trying to do? Ruin me? We can't hold them any longer. It's nine o'clock. Go out and tell them the performance is called off. They can have their money back. Their money back? Yes, I've come to see Sanin. Nobody else. We will wait five more minutes. He won't be here. The biggest house we have ever had. Go out and make the announcement. Like wild animals. Here. Hold it for me. My new opera head. Adi, Andre. Why didn't you answer the telephone? Where are they? They're gone. Where? Stop that. Where are they? All right, son. Let's know what happened. They've gone. She took him away. Well, where'd they go? I don't know. She was scared of the doctors coming after him and taking him away. She didn't want any doctor seeing him. Oh, that foolish child, that blind, lovesick child. Officer, you must find them before it's too late. Jimmy, you were here. You must know something about them. He was in trouble. You better talk up. We're trying to stop a murder. How bad was he? Pretty bad. got some rolls and milk. They were just closing up. The man said they'd have some pastry tomorrow, the kind you like. My darling, eat something. Eat something now, darling. You've hardly had anything for three days. You were gone? Only to get this milk. Oh, you spill it. I thought you were better. Poor Andre. You seem so much better this afternoon. I saw a newspaper downstairs. It says they closed the ballet. Well, it can't be helped. They'll have to wait till you're better. I stopped in at the drugstore. They won't give you any sleeping pills without a doctor's prescription. I didn't call any doctor, don't be afraid. I wouldn't call anybody, baby. I love you. I'll make you well. I know I will. I'll cure you. 
Talk to me. You talk to me, I can keep awake better. I can keep awake. I did it for three nights. I can do it some more. Don't be frightened, darling. I won't go away. I won't go to sleep. I'm here watching you. I'm watching you. I hate you. I hate me. I'm a dancer, not a crazy man lying in a bed. I'm a dancer. A dance, a dance. Don't start like that, Andre. Don't do it again. My name is Paul Dixon. I'm Paul Dixon. I'm Paul Dixon. You don't know me. Sleep. Go on, sleep. he keep on? There's no one there. Well, let me alone. He's there. He's waiting. Should I turn the light on in the corner again? He floats through doors. He climbs windows. He's always smiling in his jacket of roses because he wants to steal my face. I'm not asleep. There's the water. Look nice. Oh, how beautiful. How beautiful it was. Nina? Nina? No, 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 no. I'm tired. Can't keep awake anymore. Go to sleep, Andre. We're gone. You escaped, I warned you. Enough to come back, Nina. Nina! Nina! Darling. different people. It's you who dances with the night nut. It's not me! You 
you my happiness my whole life. There's nothing else, only you in the world. Darling, I tried to telephone you, but nobody answers, nobody. Five, ten times I have called you. The telephone is disconnected. Oh, but sweetheart, that's awful. Lucky I came, I said to myself, you can't go away without saying goodbye to darling yourself, no matter how busy you are. Where are you going? Sweetheart, where can I go? On the road, with those tall, crazy blondes. Billy Rose gave me back the job he has fired me off. So, I go again with the trunks, the hair pulling, and the medley of songs from old Vienna. It's better than begging. Moon Lake Act Two. I would like to say goodbye to Heidi. Heidi? Heidi? How is she facing the tragedy, poor child? Cried for a month at the top of her voice. To lose such a man. We all lost him. I'm leaving. I heard you were. You are dancing well again. No, her stomach needs a lot of work. It's soft, putty. Yes, Andre always hated flapping his But of course he did. Muscles are the important thing. Tone and muscle. He had perfect muscles. Superb coordination, absolute control. Magic. He was magic. I'm sorry to cry. It's stupid to keep on crying. I don't cry when I'm dancing. When I dance, it comes back to me. You are beautiful. You have a soul worthy of him and of his memory. My darling, work hard. Learn. Learn. I will. I'll be back in the spring, and we will start all over again. I'll put on a new ballet, something marvelous, brilliant, that will make the whole world happy. My wonderful darling, we'll get somebody to finance. We'll produce together, you and I, Polikov and Lassil, present 50-50, the greatest, the most beautiful of productions. Wait for me. Wait for me. I'll be back in the spring. To everybody, a big kiss. Napoleon's farewell to his troops. Very touching. Must you hang around here constantly? Haven't you any other place to go? I prefer your little battlefield, Madame Lasilf. I have been sitting in the foxholes of art a long time. With your permission, I shall sit in them forever. I take up very little room. Out of our endless tears, we make our little songs and dances. Children, please. This is a very dingy hall. There are no lights, there is no orchestra. 
only a cranky old woman watching you. But when you dance, you must dance always as if it were an opening night. The house sold out and all the beautiful people in the world out front with lorgnettes. Go on now, perform! Thank you.